welcome back to the Kubis Rupali YouTube channel. I hope you have learned something from my previous videos. I wish to continue with this video to discuss the pricing of build up quantities part 2. 1. Painting continuation. 2. Services. 3. External works. 4. Day works. 5. Soil investigation. 1. Painting continuation. Flow painting. Flow paints cover stains and irregularities, however, it depends on the condition of the flow, the quality of preparation, the application and how well the flow is maintained. Epoxy flow paint is a more suitable painting that maintains hard wearing resulting in water, oil and chemical resistance. It is cost effective but it doesn't mean it is a permanent solution because it signs of wear and tear make it doesn't last long. Using a primer coat ensures adhesion to the floor and a long lasting surface. However, the surface of the floor is to be prepared before applying the primer. The surface of the floor must be clean, dry and free from dust, oil and grease. Coverage of floor paint given below is theoretical. Wastage of paint for fills and evaporation to be assumed as 25% and not in considered below. 1 litre of primer 1 undercoat covers 10 meters squares. 1 litre of epoxy floor paint 2 coats covers 6 meters squares. The time area coverage of floor painting for one number painter and one number unskilled laborer is 40 48 meters squares per day. Example, cost of floor primer paint, one undercoat and two top coats of epoxy per one meter square. The cost of primer undercoat per one meter square equal the cost of one liter of primer plus at 25% the cost of wastage divided by 10 meter squares. The cost of two top coats of epoxy paint per one meter square equal the cost of one liter of epoxy paint plus at 25% of the cost of wastage divided by 6 meters square. The cost of labor per 1 meter square equals the cost of one day painter plus the cost of one day unskilled laborer divided by 48 meters square. Therefore, the cost of applying epoxy flow paint per 1 meter square equals cost of primer undercoat plus cost of epoxy paint plus cost of labor. Fitout work. Fitout work is the interior design carried out on a property to complete the shell construction completed by the builder suitable for spacious occupation by the fitout contractor. Generally for restaurants, offices, outlets and apartments often concerning interior development work, the landlord allows the tenant to complete the work. The process of making an interior space suitable for occupation includes electrical, mechanical, decorating and furnishing systems by the interior designer to suit the occupier's requirements and in line with the local authority requirements. The fit-out refers to activities such as the installation of floor, wall, ceiling, partitions and furnishing in line with the electrical, mechanical and plumbing requirements. A fit-out company's responsibility include timely completion, organizing execution details, determining the necessary materials and equipment and organizing their purchase on time. It is important to ensure the safety of employees and members of the public by erecting barricades around the construction area and making detours to other access areas, keeping materials and equipment packed away when not in use. The key steps of the planning process for fit-out works include defining the project scope and objectives, conducting need assessment, cost assumptions and timeline and obtaining statutory approval and permits, preparing and obtaining approval for the procurement list and ordering long-lead items to avoid delays and having adequate 
storage of without items. 2. Services Building services include MEP works in the construction industry. MEP stands for Mechanical, Electrical and Plumbing, which includes planning, designing and constructing. The system together makes building interiors safe and liveable and the three techniques are incorporated into buildings to make them suitable for human occupancy and use. They regulate drinking water, drain waste and surface water, heating, ventilation and air conditioning, lighting and power, fire alarm and firefighting, telephone and plumbing systems. 3. External works External works describe primarily the areas immediately surrounding the building. The provisions include access roads, paved areas, curbs, boundary walls, soft landscaping, swimming pools, ancillary buildings and external MEP works. Access roads Access roads are in residential and commercial areas to provide access to homes, offices, schools, hospitals, shops, etc. They may be used throughout a site for transportation purposes. There are many types of access roads, namely ingress or egress roads, aggregate access roads, driveways, hall roads, and roadways. In my YouTube episode 10, I discuss aggregate access roads for heavy vehicle transportation. Asport access roads are commonly used for haul roads and roadways for heavy duty trucks and buses and driveways for lightweight duty vehicles. For this purpose, generally, asport is used as the main element to construct access roads. An example of access road will be discussed in my next video. Thank you. Please wait for my next video for the continuation of the discussion on the pricing of bill of quantities part 2. I would be pleased if you are motivated by the desire to explore the value of the fields necessary that would contribute to the construction industry. Please refer to the description box below for the written description of this video clip. With a positive attitude and a growth mindset, keep moving forward and explore the field. I will see you in the next video. If you are inspired and learned something in this video, please click like, subscribe to my YouTube channel and press the bell button to receive my upcoming videos and share with others too.